Do not attempt to adjust your programming. Don't adjust it. Except for the volume. Pew 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 That's the sounds of Thanksgiving! Uh, that's not the sounds I made. <laughs> what are those sounds? You don't want to hear those. <laughs> I was thinking the the sounds of Thanksgiving way back in the day, you know, when uh, those pilgrims <laughs> took over those Indians. <laughs> they didn't the... shoot them with laser guns, Peter. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Maybe we should rewrite Thanksgiving history. Yeah, we can redo it. I mean, I always imagine. I mean, anytime you're shooting any type of kind of gun, like you just make that sound effect. Like even back then, right? Turok, the dinosaur hunter. Pew, saved, pew. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Sa saved Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, welcome in to B-Movies and Beyond. This is episode 299. Ooh. Ryan, how are you? How was your Thanksgiving? Peter, thank you for asking. I'm fantastic. And Thanksgiving was just nice. And, you know, for the first time in a long time, it was relaxing. So That's good. Yeah, well, I think our family just kind of just decided to make it nice and chill. Yeah, nice. That's good. Get some good food. Got the same old Thanksgiving food you always get, man. Some turkey, some stuffing, some other white people food, and <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have ham? Lots of ham. Still eating okay. ham. Good. Still eating ham. Good. I made the ham just... this year. Did you? How yeah. did that go? Fantastic. I mean, yeah? I make good food. I didn't know this, but I'm a really good cook. Oh, nice. You're really good at following those recipes. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all you really need to do. It's true. <laughs> and if it sucks, you blame it on the recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Did I just follow the instructions? I found it on Etsy. I don't know. You found it on Etsy? <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> Ryan does not know where to get recipes. Or you paid for one. Did you like pay for a recipe from Etsy that was no, like quilted onto under a quilt? <laughs> These are really hard to find. Is that is that brown sugar or is that cinnamon? Yeah. Whatever. Oh, I'll do both. <laughs> uh, no, it was I'm good. How about it. how about yours, Peter? What'd you do? Uh, you know, so we celebrate like the only time we get the whole family all together was uh, the I guess Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah. So, so that was nice. We did a day early and um, it was good to have all the family around and we had a good time and um, played some, um, what is that? Heads up. You know, that game with the phone up to your head. That was fun. Just yelling at each other. Always a good time. Get out your frustrations. Right. Uh, yeah. And then the rest of the, the weekend, you know, we, we relaxed. Wife and I worked a puzzle. I had a, great old time did you complete the puzzle we sure did what did the puzzle oh it was like a, a 70s theme uh had like all these different like 70s like um media things on there you know like the brady bunch jaws like a lot of these things that came out Is it 70s yeah in the 70s that were like big in the 70s so yeah pretty cool puzzle I am. Um, have you ever played Left Right Center? Left Right Center? No, I have not. It's a coin game where you have, no, I'm sorry, it's a dice game, but you bet and you have three coins or tokens or whatever, and you roll the dice and each die will say left, right, or center, or have a black dot, and you move your chips around or your monies around, um, and the last winner gets the pot. Hmm. So yeah. the most, most monies win? Most monies win. Our family played very cheap. Each pot was maybe about <laughs> five bucks, but well, it was like real money. It was real money, and I was screwed out of it because I. Long story short, nobody knows rules, or they make up house <laughs> rules at the last minute. So, <laughs> oh, I gotta love those house rules, I hate especially them, when, when it's people that are not a part of the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then my favorite thing was like I clearly read the rules and I was like, no, technically I won. <laughs> Not in this house. Not in this house. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? Oh, yeah, cool. Man. That's great. 
That's awesome. Um, any well, good- sorry that you lost. I mean, that's that part's not good, but it's that's always the joy of playing with family, right? <laughs> it's what uh, Big Daddy, remember? What's this game? It's called I Win. I, yeah, <laughs> I win. That's basically what I played. Yeah, so. it's always it's good for the person that wins, but uh, everyone else kind of sucks for. So. And I was that person that sucked for. So yeah. yeah. So anybody in my family who's listening to this episode, you guys cheated. <laughs> You tell them. You cheated. All right. Let's get in our quick question, buddy. Oh, yeah. <gasps> what? How? Why? I have so many questions. <laughs> we, um, I don't know if you've been, uh, like, I don't know. Quentin Tarantino has been, like, in the news uh, quite a bit. He must have, He did some, like, interview or something. Uh, but one of the things they, he, he, they were talking about was he said, uh, that Marvel actors are not movie stars. So he, he thinks that, uh, you know, you have these famous people playing these characters, but they're not the star. It's Captain America is the star. Thor is the star. Like, you know, it's not like you could just put anyone into it and it's going to be great. It doesn't matter about the movie star. It's about the person they're playing. Like that's it's the superhero they're playing. Do you do you think this is true? Isn't that just called acting? <laughs> they are acting. <laughs> isn't that the point of cinema? Like, isn't he the most guilty of that all? Like, I, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. It's such a weird comment. Like, I was trying to like, see it, like, from his point of view, you know, like, what, what he's talking about. Um, You know, like, 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 I'm trying to think, like, could they just put anyone into these roles in <sighs> I, I don't maybe like to a certain extent yes but I don't know if that's absolutely true like I mean so far I feel like they just done like a really good ca- uh, job casting right like they've done a good job of bringing in big movie stars and also just bringing up new people right and some of these people I feel like have turned into gigantic names based you know, from these movies and, <sighs> but some of them they're like, I mean, I'm going to go. S- okay. I'll, I'll say Marvel has something in, I guess even DC where I'm just going to go see those movies just because that's my fandom, right? That's what I'm into. Even if it sucks, I'm still going to see it at some point. Uh, maybe not go straight out to the movie theaters and watch it, but I'm going to watch it in the near future. Right. And I, I'm going to see all of them. I, even the ones I hear that's really suck. I still go see, but based on like, you know, who's in them per se and how well they actually act and portray these characters. It makes it more enjoyable where I want to continue to see those movies and that actor playing that character, right? You're absolutely right. And I think this is a case of, I think there's, we're seeing this with directors who are very envious of what's going on with Marvel right now. And we're really starting to see this with Tarantino. And the other one is James Cameron. They're in the news so much talking smack about every other cinema or media or anything else besides their product. In some cases, James Cameron is backhandedly talking shit about his product, but Tarantino, his his type of movie encompasses everything that you just explained about a Marvel movie. There was a fan base and a follower and a fandom for Tarantino movies. There was Reservoir Dogs, which led to True Romance, and then Pulp Fiction was a major film, blew up, made a bunch of stars out of Sam Jackson, you know revive careers like John Travolta brought up big name people like Uma Thurman. So what he's 
complaining about or what he's disgruntled about that Marvel and Disney are doing right now, Tarantino's guilty of doing the same exact thing in his own Tarantino universe. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same premise. Absolutely. Because yeah, people have those people, you know, that just love Quentin Tarantino and it doesn't matter what it is. They're going to go see it. Right. Right. Exactly. And they're going to love it because it's him. So Sam Jackson, Tim Roth, Kurt Russell, Michael Madsen. Who are they? They're all Mar Tarantino. Is it Mars Marsden? No, that's not right. Madsen. Michael Madsen. No. Why is that not right? You're thinking James Marsden. No, yeah. I just feel like that's not how you say his last name. That Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Christopher <laughs> Watts. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. I'm just listing off people who are just these are in the Tarantino universe. Inglorious Bastards, another one, dude. Like oh, Brad, yeah. Brad Pitt, Eli Roth. Dude, he's just what he's saying, he does for his own universe. I think he's trying to say because they're comic book movies and the characters are already written, that these actors shouldn't you're not gonna go see them for Chris Evans as Captain America because you're going to go see Captain America for who he is. Makes sense? Yeah. To your point, he's wrong. To his point, <clears throat> he's trying to devalue the product be by saying, well, these characters were comic book characters and you could just plug and play whoever you want in there. I, I think he's just saying there's already a built-in fan base, so maybe it's a little bit of cheating, you know, on Marvel's side and even DC. But like, I, you just know, giving the fans what they want. I know, dude. <laughs> I, I just like it, it's selling. His stuff sells too. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like it, they're all in the same business. They're all just trying to make money. So just, I mean, come on. But and I, he did say like you know you. He's not like saying that these people aren't good actors. It's just that, you know, he believes that these people aren't going to go see him because of the actors and they're going to go see it because of, uh, you know, who they're portraying. But I, I strongly believe, though, that if they got they casted it wrong, the fans are going to let them know and it's going to be big black backlash. And I think I, I don't know if that's happened so much in Marvel. I'm sure it has, but I can't think of like one like terrible casting choice. Can you? In Marvel? Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to hate me for it. Who? I think Mr. Fantastic. Well, yeah. And I don't, that's, they're not going to keep him. They're not going to keep John. Right. Uh, uh, Kerensky, you know, I think Kerensky. he was a test to see if people what kind of reaction they would get for him. Um, yeah. that was like a cameo type deal where, like, all right, the fans have asked this. Like, I'll admit, like, I think looking at the fan art, like, he looks amazing, but as soon as you see him actually portray, you're like, hmm, I think that's that's they're wrong. So, uh, absolutely, like, I, I agree, but I guess I don't count that because to me, it's just more of a cameo type deal and not so much uh, a main character you know well think about this like could you see someone else play Tony Stark uh, no and, and again this is why I think Tony Stark Robert Downey Jr. is like the perfect example dude he made that character mm -hmm. I would argue that that is his character it's not tony stark from the comic books this is his this is robert downey jr yes and like like because again the first one like that was just a surprise hit right and then it every it, everyone was blown away by his performance and the overall just the movie itself from then it started it kept on building and building and building and you know and you just start to expect a certain quality from marvel it's the same you know going back to what you said it's exactly what quentin tarantino's everyone expects something from quentin tarantino and that's why they go mm -hmm. see these movies yep. so his same logic, you can absolutely put it into the, his thing. Say, all right, anyone you plug into a Quentin Tarantino movie, it doesn't matter because you already got your built-in fan base. So 
do whatever the fuck you want. They're not movie stars. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. Uh, well, okay. To like my last point on this one is okay, you did ask me who they got wrong as a casting. And you could say it was very early in the before this universe was being made that we know of with the Incredible Hulk, Edward Norton. Well, I was going to go even back before that, Eric Bana. <laughs> but he wasn't, okay, he wasn't technically part of the MCU. Yeah, but he was the first one. I felt like they kind of screwed up on that. You know who else I thought they kind of got wrong? Uh, Frank Castle when it was, um, oh, um, oh, dude, what's that guy's name? You know, again, this is like before the MCU, right? But uh, um, Thomas, is it Thomas? Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane. Yeah. yeah. I knew he had a weird two, like, two girl names. Yeah, he's like more like, that's a villain's name, man. Like, I just a... feel like, yeah, he was another one where like, I, I like the guy, but I didn't think he was, uh, you know, he wasn't Frank Castle to me. No, Disney got Frank Castle right, dude. Yeah. They bring back Shane from The Walking Dead. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so Tarantino uh, and James Cameron, you guys need to kind of just stay in your lane. Shut up. Yeah. Dude, you're, you guys are all doing the exact same things. You're, you're making art that you want to make, and you're hoping that sells tickets, and there you go. That's what everyone's doing in Hollywood. So move on. Like Move on, are. like we are right now. <laughs> Here are some exciting coming attractions from Movies and Beyond. So it was a, a slow uh, <laughs> uh, trailer release time from the last time we recorded. Oh my gosh, um, dude. And we like took a week off. Yeah, we're doing this a little bit late, but I'm going to try to get this out quickly. Uh, but, hey, at least there's a new trailer that has Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> Dude, and that's all you can really ask for. That's right. Just like, in time for the holidays. <laughs> just in time for Nick Cage month. Yep. Oh, uh, which, it, are you, you're excited? I already have been watching Nick Cage movies. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm like... I'm excited for this movie. Actually, this it's called The Old Way. It's a western with Nicolas Cage, which I, I was kind of thinking back. Like he hasn't done a western yet, right? Is this his first western? Let's see. He was in Con Air, in the <laughs> Rock. He's gone in sixty seconds. So far, not westerns. <laughs> the uh, unbearable weight of massive talent. No. Um, I don't think so. Um, but the, he, uh, Willie's Wonderland. You just keep on looking. I'll, I'm going to explain this for, for what this is about. It's going to be a, he's so Nicholas Cage plays like an old gunslinger, like kind of like, I think a criminal he's gone his separate ways that he got married, had a kid and it, you know, classic thing we were talking about this last week you know where his old life catches up with them and and uh i, I believe um dude his, is he just filming his life in different eras maybe but did his wife die i don't know it sounds like something that would happen in the cage <laughs> life. Son's name is cal l man i don't think <laughs> he got superman for his son uh but yeah, I think the, the wife dies and he gets to go and, and do some uh, revenge with his daughter. Uh, I I think he looks fantastic as a cowboy. Uh, I'm super excited to to see him just, you know, being a gunslinger and, and teaching his daughter how to uh, shoot, basically. So, see, you know what's cool about like, that kind of story is, is it's not just a Western. Like, he has a story behind it with a western like face and he's teach he, it's like a uh love letter to his daughter does he have a daughter he has to have a daughter he keeps on bringing up a daughter in his um movies right uh he just doesn't he just have a new kid i don't know that's for next month man we'll do some trivia on him 
Uh, <laughs> stay tuned. Dude, I'm still looking for any sort of Western with him. And Peter, I think you're right. I don't think so. World so Trade Center, Wicker Man. The guy has done a, a lot of things. You know, he's been like a wizard. Uh, you know, um, he was a gerbil. A, a gerbil, a scientist. Uh, he was a Spider Man, like Ooh, Batman this, and a Superman. Yeah. Yes, the guy's done a lot. He's, but. I'm trying to think, like, is there something that you haven't seen him do that you want to see him do? Oh, dude, that's a good question. I want to see him in Star Wars. In Star Wars? That was the, the one thing I was saying. is like, I don't know if he quite has, like, a space movie. He has, a lot of, like, some future movies where he's, like, in a post-apocalyptic uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, atmosphere or surrounding, you know, like, He's been assassins. He can see the future and some like, dude. He even had what? a Taken ripoff called Stolen. Twelve hours, ten million dollars, one kidnapped daughter. Stolen. <laughs> he's he's done a lot of National Treasure. He's hunted. Like I mean, he's played a uh, you know twins before. He's done military movie. He even has a Christmas Carol apparently. Um, I just space is like kind of the one place where I don't feel like he's really been. Yeah, no, you're right. He, see, there's a movie called Color Out of Space, but yeah, that's it, not. It's not. That has to do with like I think aliens kind of come, but like so. But I want him to go to space. I want him to be in Star Wars. I think the new media. He needs to be like some lead pilot for the rebels. Like they mm. need to make Nick Cage like just this old timey like leader of the rebel rogue squadron, something like that, dude. If they did that, I would just I'd be in heaven. Yeah, I would watch. I would be a Star Wars fan all over again. That would be fantastic. Uh, well, and I'm it, sure it, he needs it's to come in back the works. In the MCU, by the way, oh, dude, that would have been a perfect thing to add him to. Uh uh that doctor strange too that would have been awesome he needs to come back as ghost rider yeah oh but he's gonna he's gonna play Drac dracula so he's gonna be a monster soon like he's been dracula yeah. before what vampire's kiss oh no not dracula no yeah not dracula but a vampire so yeah i guess so drac uh, vampires are up his wheelhouse but you know what i'm saying like, he's even played himself like <laughs> the guy has done a lot Again, the, the only thing is, I don't think he's done a space movie. So I'm with you. I, that'd be awesome if he uh, showed up in uh, Star Wars some, at some point. And he needs another crossover uh, multi-universe movie. And it that'd needs be to fun. be him in Fast and Furious. Yeah, I mean, dude, he's even played John Travolta. Dude, the guy's done everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong on that one. Yeah. Uh, the last trailer... Uh, I'm I'm super stoked for this one. It's called the Mean One, um, and it's like a it's a knockoff on the Grinch, where the Grinch is a fucking killer and and super low budget, and he's gonna go out and and uh, uh, he's just killing. He's on a rampage, killing all kinds of people, and some chick seems to be uh, training to go kick his ass, and I. I, I don't even know how else to describe this movie. It's a parody horror film and it, it looks fantastic. I, I dig how the Grinch looks too. So Peter. Uh, yeah. Is there a wave of knockoff storybook horror movies coming out? Yes. Because you had this win in the poof, right? You're referencing that. Yeah. Um, Which this uh, is the multiverse or universe that we've we've asked this question before. Like, what kind of universe or multiverse would you want to see that's different? And, and none of us answered this question with this answer, but they created it for us. Yeah. You, hey, you want to know something that's cool about this? I think I know where you're going with it. Guess who's playing the mean one? Who's playing yeah. the Grinch? <laughs> Our good old buddy, Art the Cloud. Yep. 
<laughs> David Howard Thornton's playing art or playing the mean one. So he speaks he, in this one too. Oh, does he? Nice. This so, might be his first speaking role. It might be, but that's just I don't know. Having that aspect into it, that, that's cool. I this comes out. I, apparently, it's going to be in theaters. I don't know where. They said like December 9th. Uh, I'm seeing something on the IMDb that says December 15th this year. I don't know, but I'm going to try to find it. I I need to see this. I need to see this. And Peter, it's not just some chick who's trying to kill him. It is Cindy. It is Cindy Lou Who. Like the original? Yeah. So what I like about the trailer, what I gathered from it is like, I don't think they have any of the license from Dr. Suits. So they don't say huh. the Grinch. They don't say Whoville. Like it's called Newville, you know? So yeah. they like well, it's a parody. They can get away with all that. But uh no. Oh, this okay, you got me confused. It's not the actress that played Cindy Lou in the original, but yes, it's <laughs> Cindy that's the character. I gotcha. <laughs> I nope. thought because Cindy Lou Who turned into the lead singer of uh oh dang it. Um it's right there on the tip of my tongue. That rock band, not Paramore. Uh, what is it? Excuse me, what? You don't know this? No. Cindy Lou Who from the, the How the Grinch Stole. Uh, what? Yes. What is that band? Pretty Reckless. Yes, the Pretty Reckless. Jeez, she is the the main singer there. <laughs> That's what she turned into. She turned into the lead singer of uh, the Pretty Reckless. Pretty crazy, right? Oh my god, that's hilarious, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah, I love it. Aren't that's they from cool. here? No, they're from New York. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Wow. So, yeah, the more you know. If I had that queued up, I'd be pressing that button like crazy. I don't have yeah. to I don't have the board today. I know. Um yeah, but that that's it for trailers. So but I both those movies. Super excited about anything with Nicolas Cage and a parody, horror parody. I'm in, which I, I need to, again, I need to seek out uh, Winnie the Pooh, uh, Blood and Honey, too. I need to do that. So, Peter, has Nicolas Cage made a horror parody movie? Oh, I think he has, hasn't he? Isn't that like what his 2000s movies are? <laughs> I don't know if they're parodies. I would say maybe the closest that he's kind of come is that uh, Wally's Wonderland. Yeah, I was thinking that one too. Yeah, I mean that one's fantastic. So, but uh, do we got some news? Yeah. Peter, news, Ryan. I was today years old when I found out that uh, Cindy Lou Who was the lead singer of Pretty Reckless. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for that one. <laughs> oh man. Uh oh, uh, where do you think we should start? Should we should we do like the sad stuff and then move on? Yeah, let's the sad stuff is Tommy from the Power Rangers has passed away. Mm -hmm. Jason David Frank. Yep. You know, in the worst possible way, too. It's just, you know, he's going through, a, I guess, a divorce. And, um, yeah, couldn't couldn't handle it. So, uh, really sad. I, I hate to see that, you know. Like, there's just so much to live for. Yeah. Dude, you're the fucking Green Ranger. Come on. I mean, even years after that, like, you are the Green Ranger. And that just kind of tells you... You can be one of the most well-known child actors, teenage actors, and like an influence generations from years to come. And, and like, it still is not enough sometimes. So, you know, I mean, I guess what I got to say is if you ever have thoughts, like call that number, the suicide prevention hotline or seek some help because we don't want to lose our heroes and we don't want to lose them that way. And like, it was sad news, man. Like you don't expect, the Green Ranger. He was one of the most toughest characters of my generation. I looked up to him so much. I wanted to be the Green Ranger and then the White Ranger because he hooked up with Kimberly. And, like, you know. And he had a movie coming out. Did he really? 
Yeah, the Legend of the White Dragon. Is that a Power Ranger movie? <laughs> it's kind of a Power Ranger movie. Okay. Like it was it was loose it's Bat in the Sun productions. He's been making this for a while. And I think they were pretty close to wrapping up, but who knows? I mean, maybe he got some news about that movie. He put so much time and effort into it. We just don't know. I mean, I'd love to learn more information, but at this time it's kind of like let his family have their time and space. So yeah, it's just yeah, this is a um Absolutely. It looks like uh, um, uh, Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. I think it even has other Power Rangers in it. Yeah, but is this kind of like a more gritty version of it? Yeah, like their own character, their own, like a parody of it. What's up with all these parodies? I don't know, man. Like, oh, it has Michael Madsen Madsen in it. Yeah. (laughs) So, Michael Madsen. uh, Yeah, (laughs) that's right. I don't, dude. Well, I'm bummed out about this. Is there ever was there a trailer for it? You know, Peter, I almost put that trailer in today's episode, but it was from eleven months ago. No, so they did so, release something. I don't know. Did it look cool? Yeah, they've been trying to make this. It looked pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I followed this for a little bit because he had a connect. Like he made that short with him being the Green Ranger. Mm -hmm. Bat in the sun, and then they just decided to like really, and he had a GoFundMe and all kinds of stuff to try and make this work. But yeah, because well, um, I know it's it's sad. Uh, You know, I uh, hope the best for you know his family and everything, and you know, rest in peace, uh, Tommy. So. Rest in peace, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, lighter news. Did you watch the Guardians of the uh, Galaxy um, holiday special? Peter, not only did I watch it, but I watched it like three times. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I watched it three times, and the, you always know this, there's a reason why I watched something multiple times. It's because I didn't pay attention. <laughs> but <laughs> there was only 45 minutes long. <laughs> But that's the thing. That was what I was getting to. It was only 45 minutes long. And I was like, dude, I have 45 minutes I can kill where I can get to this. And I started seeing more reactions um, and the little Easter eggs here and there for for this. I was like, all right, I got to sit back and I got to catch up and see what some of these Easter eggs are about. So um, what do you think of it? You know, I, I loved it. I thought it was the perfect thing. Like it's it's. There's no villain. It's just a little, it's like a side mission, you know, of a video game. It's, it's a little side story from, uh, you know, I kind of the ends of uh, end game to Guardians of the Galaxy volume three. They set up a little bit, like just in, in mm-hmm. passing, kind of like where they are. Uh, nothing crazy, I wouldn't say, you know, like, all right, you see, there's gonna be a, new character which seems really cool with cosmo the the dog um they're and like all this stuff is on roots right grown now. up yeah roots what they call him like swall like he, he's still yeah. like going through he's he's gone through puberty base or more so where he's kind of getting he's getting thicker and everything uh so i mean like it's kind of fun to see like that progression um you know you, you still kind of see where like Star Lord's still just kind of moping around because Gamora's gone. Uh and they're on um nowhere. Like that's kind of where like they're they're based out of. Um, like oh, those yeah. were kind of like the three takeaways from it, but had the same tone from all the movies, you know, like everything was there. Dude, I love the opening, the the intro to it with well, not not so much the animation part. Like I think that was just that was just called back to like old old timey um you know christmas animation stuff did but it as soon as they got that, or did for me it reminded me of like the animation style of heavy metal which i also thought was really cool yeah and i think that's kind of the same animation yeah it's kind of the same stuff it's just that older stuff like from you know it's not Bro, super high quality but uh heavy metal had tits in it 
well, okay, there's no tits in this. <laughs> but the animation style's there. <laughs> is tits a type of animation style? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I feel like that's what you're getting at with the the heavy metal style, um, <laughs> but the the that original song by I don't even know who it is. I should look it up. That they had like, is this what Christmas is all about? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was just so funny. It Great way to the old ninety sevens. Old ninety sevens. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna write that down because I want to check out more stuff from them because it sounded good. Um, but I thought that was, it was so fantastic, you know, like it, it didn't, you just got little new pieces of information that, you know, would easily been put out there, like in the first like couple minutes of like the new movie. Right. Right. And, and this kind of just gets it out right now and you get a little fun story with Kevin Bacon, which was awesome. <laughs> Any story with Kevin Bacon. Ke Dude, there's three. It's Keanu Reeves, Nick Cage, and Kevin Bacon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, if Tarantino had those guys in his own comic book movie, he'd stop complaining. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten any of those guys but, before. Um, I Okay, so this was uh, one of James Gunn's contractual ob obligations. Um, I think he did really fun with it. Like it was a, uh, the song was, I agree with you. The song was great. It made me want to sit back and listen to like what they were saying in lyrics. I don't care about lyrics usually when I listen to music, but this one was nonsense about Christmas. And during, the, during the initial uh, song, like Peter Quill was like, Nope, that's not how it is. That's not yeah. true. That's, you yeah. know, like, and okay. So you're right. It did introduce Cosmo, which is Borat's daughter. Oh, is that who's doing the voice? That's the voice is Borat's daughter. So Maria Bakla Baklova, Baklova, and she's Cosmo the space dog. You find out Cosmo has um, telekinesis powers and can talk. And Kevin Bacon is a fictionalized version of himself. I yeah. love how they put that on there. You know, and what else I thought was really fantastic about this is that you got to learn so much more about Mantis. Yes. And you actually get to see her be a badass and use her powers in a really cool way. Uh, like I, I, that, that aspect alone, I thought that was, that was great. Just getting to see that side of her because you haven't been able to see that, see that yet, which leads me to believe there's probably gonna be even more in the new movie. Yeah. But now you get a little taste of it and you know, like, oh, she can do so much more than what, she, you know, we've seen her do already. She's still goofy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she still has an attitude. And uh, you know what? One thing I noticed in this little series is it was very Christmassy, but uh, Disney did this whole like proactive thing all over again. Did you notice the bar was the gay bar? Uh at first, but then there's like women and stuff. So like, I feel like they were trying to go that way. And they're like, no, nah, we got to add some females. <laughs> I think they did a, such a good job at saying, here we are being progressive. And here's our gay bar, but everybody can be gay. Because listen, this movie was about space creatures coming to Earth and humans. So there was no agenda whatsoever. Like this movie had no Christmas agenda except for to be stupid. You know, there was no like religion or anything like there's little sprinkles of of hints here and there but it was not a, a full-on agenda so nobody can pick this movie apart peter no i think no, the yeah. i mean the message that i got from it was just kind of like it's kind of like all christmas movies is you know do good unto others you know like it was a nice presentation you know, thoughtful stuff is it's caring for others was really kind of like the the moral of the story there. And that was it. Like, that's all you needed. Like, that's a Christmas movie, right? Well, you find out something at the end of the movie, which is kind of cool. But we won't say it. Yeah, but it, I didn't, I thought it was such a weird kind of thing, and I don't really care for it. And I don't think it changes much for me, but whatever. Uh, you know, the other things I thought were interesting was just they mentioned Batman. So 
in this Marvel Cinematic Universe, there's Batman exists. So that's and Jason. Cool. Did they mention Jason too? Yeah. They and and the GoBots. Yeah. Which that was that was really funny as well. Like and I don't. I didn't. And you know what, dude? I uh, I'm gonna be dumb. I didn't realize Kevin Bacon was in the first Friday the Thirteenth. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> right? in it. I forgot that was the reference to it. Um, yeah. yeah, which was hilarious. Like, dude, everything with Kevin Bacon was just fantastic. Uh, it was so good. I wish um, I would reference him as Sebastian Shaw from X Men. Oh, that would have been fun. Yeah, if they went that meta with it. So, so one thing they didn't mention. Um, like, oh yeah, I've dealt with mutants before. Yeah, I, what, what's I mean, why I brought this up, though, really wasn't to review it, but I'm glad we did. Yeah, was, no joke. <laughs> we yeah, got a was, out of it. Yeah. The, the funny thing, though, is like, dude, and this is just, oh, man, this fan base is just nuts. But like, I saw like people like, you know, like complaining about what you're telling me, because one of the one of the gags in this movie is is Nebula gives Rocket uh, a Christmas gift and it is um the winter soldier's arm his metal arm right like the thing that he he asked for in infinity wars like can i have that <laughs> you know and she got it for him it, i thought it was such a great joke right like like right. it was just stupid silly who cares but all these all these fans at least some of them like just start saying you're dumb and nebula went and stole his arm or, or like fought him and got it and like and i i love james gunn for this aspect is that he talks to his fans so much and i love how he's just like well yeah i did that sorry get over it. it's canon now like dude i don't care yeah. like she she's a badass she's a, like a cyborg basically and she has the christmas spirit and yeah he took she fought him off and took his arm <laughs> like it is just <laughs> like he, she's a badass and it's canon now so in your face there's nothing you can do about it like that aspect of it that's the whole point. There is nothing you can do about it. It's out there now. Everyone's seen it. It doesn't matter if you don't like it and you thought it was dumb. Who cares? It was hilarious. It was funny. Like, just let it go. And like the fact that like they're saying that aspect of it is like the downfall of like the MCU, which to me, I'm like, no, they're taking making light of what they already have done. They're calling back to old references. They're doing the, the, you know like this little thing like is not going to let them stop them to move on and they'll probably even incorporate it in some later movie where uh, he gets the, a new yes. arm like it's dude, yeah. like, this is all stuff they've done in comic books and now they're doing it on film and the fact that you can't like just stand by this i think that's like really a cool callback and something that happened and it's just such a little moment too like does it really matter but that's what comic books are man there's tons of callbacks. There's just like everything. Nothing is like uh, can't be unchanged, right? Like that is comics, man. Like we keep on coming back for more and more of that. Let it happen in the movies. Like I don't know why this is such a big deal that like oh that never happened in the comic books. Why can't it happen in the movies? Just let it go, fans. Come on, get in the holiday spirit. Have some fun with your movies. And Peter, I keep on going back to the time that you had me realize the storytelling of Thor love and thunder. And it just, it opened up my entire mind about each one of these Marvel movies. Each one can be completely different in their tone, but still relate to the big picture. And it doesn't have to follow this universe multiverse crap. It can literally be its own entity with some callbacks to other movies or franchises and whatnot, and be fun with it. The other one, look, Peter Quill got, um, grew a game boy. Remember he took mm -hmm. away his video game? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one too. I forgot about that. So come on, fans, chill out. Yeah. It dude, that's been like kind of the 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 moral, you know, the message from this story is to chill out. Quentin Tarantino, chill out. You know, <laughs> fans, chill out. Come on, just enjoy it. Like, I don't know why you gotta nitpick these things. Hey, and Warner Brothers, chill out. Let Weird Al make a Harry Potter parody. <laughs> why not i thought did he really want like a whole parody or he wanted to just do a parody song um i thought when i read it it said that he wanted to do a parody 
Revealed that his reason in Battle of Fake Daniel wasn't his first brush with Harry Potter. Uh, 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 uh. Which, dude, if Harry, if Weird Al did a parody of Harry Potter and he was Daniel Radcliffe, that would just be the most. Uh, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he. I think he wanted to do actual uh, uh, a parody of the music, so he wanted to get uh his hands on the Hedwig theme john williams central piece from all eight harry potter films to uh, to do a um you know a, a parody of it which warner brothers come on chill out <laughs> something like that can bring a resurgence to harry potter and without them creating new media come on well dude, what does it do yeah what does it do like so he, he's gonna like Especially from Weird Al, man. Like, his stuff is so uh, kid-friendly, kind of. Like, it's it's wholesome fun. It's not bad. It's not, like, 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 it's nothing that, like, makes it, like, downplays what that song came from, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I never felt he ever did any of that. Like, he just makes a very catchy song, like, of course, using music from someone else. But making it something unique and, and almost original because of that. Well, and he, it's, just, it's good fun. Like the fact that Warner Brothers just wants to stomp on that, it's just it's ridiculous. Why is Warner Brothers being all grouchy lately? What the hell? Well, I mean, this is way back when they, I don't know. All these, I just feel like these big wigs, some of these people, man, like I just don't think they see the, uh, you know, they don't have a sense of humor. I think mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to leave it at. This episode is brought to you by a sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> yes. Speaking of funny, Antonio Benders wants Tom Holland to be the next Zorro. Okay. I just, no, that's, that's bad casting. We were talking about bad casting and that would be one of them. Yeah. I, I just feel like Antonio Banderas is like, who's big right now and young. There we go new Sp spider-man he's gonna be he's just gonna take over all the franchises um we i don't know if we really need to uh, yeah i guess we could talk about this because we'll probably do a quick review but uh nintendo's announcing the full trailer release date for the mario brothers movie so we're getting release date announcements for movie trailers now it's true i mean dude it's all about building buzz the reason why I knew the the mean one trailer came out because I saw it on Twitter. Like they were creating buzz on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, they got to put it out there. And you know what? Thanks for letting me know because now I know to look for it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, you can't be mad at that one. Hey, yeah. Peter, you know what I'm thankful for? What's that? Oh, oh, funky music. Yeah. What else comes with funky music? Um. Manscape clean shaven balls. Yes, we would <laughs> like to thank Manscape for sponsoring B movies and beyond. It's been a great month with them. Very ex uh, thankful for them. Very grateful for for Manscape. Um, you, you might still have some a little bit of time at the time of this recording to get twenty percent off and free shipping from Manscape. Uh, dot com by using code beyond 20 i mean ryan tell them about the price i mean they're just fantastic i'm still amazed that i can shave in the dark <laughs> that little flashlight on the mower man is awesome <laughs> it's just <laughs> like yeah you want to do some late night trimming boom you're good to go you can do it in the shower right yeah i get my purple lights on and make it look like space theme i play this music <laughs> and I just shave up, man. And you know what's cool is replacements. You can have them on order. So they ship to you whenever you want. You can just create your own shipment packages. And so you'll always have fresh, clean blades. So you don't always have to reuse your blades. You can be like, you know what? I'm done with that one. Pop it off. Put a new one on there. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 has guards. Peter, I'm not going to lie. I shave my my beard with it. A four. <laughs> Everything else, I will do a good clean shave. 
on my beard, you know? and then I'll 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 do everything else. So it's I didn't want to say it, but I I used it for the same thing. I, I just <laughs> you know I kind of yeah, yeah you know it works fantastic though. And again, I can see those stray hairs. So exactly. Uh, I mean. I mean, pretty much. Just, if there's some hair, you can trim it with it. <laughs> and you know what? I've, I've I've had Manscaped for so long that like now I have two shavers, so I could just do you dual me. fist. I dual fist. <laughs> just. <laughs> oh man, you're so efficient, so efficient. <laughs> uh, but I can't thank Manscaped enough. They got some high uh, quality products. Um, I just bought some. Uh, body wash and shampoo and conditioner and i'm um, super excited for it so like it, have you tried i mean the ball gel, by the way the what the ball gel the gel yeah i have not tried that well all right manscape get another get another purchase from me with my uh, code beyond 20 remember go to manscape.com use code beyond 20 get 20 percent off and free shipping beyond 20 your balls will thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you know what I love about our podcast? What's that? We have the best music. We really do. Another thing I'm grateful for. Aaron and his music making skills and me taking stuff and editing it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. I'm thankful for that as well. Um, Peter, you want to go first or me? Sure. You know, I started, I got in the holiday spirit, man. Oh, I just gave it away. I watched Spirited. The, With. the Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. Oh uh, yeah, Apple. how did that go? Dude, it is. Um, it's enjoyable. It okay. is very enjoyable. Uh, I I thought it was. It's it's just it's it's a fun movie. Um, you know, typical Ryan Reynolds, typical Will Ferrell. Uh, you know, but that's I think it's charm right that's like why you wanted to see it like these are the movie stars you were kind of goes you're gonna go see to, to watch this movie you know you know what you're you're in for what type of uh comedy and and it it delivered on all in that aspect of it uh you know the other thing though this is a it's a musical um and it's it's a retelling i don't know if that's the right word it's it's a version of the Christmas Carol. That's how I'm going to put this. Okay. So, uh, Will Ferrell he plays um, the the ghost of Christmas Present, and and so basically what this is 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 uh, there's a <laughs> I guess a a group of individuals or maybe even like a whole organization i should say and and their whole go goal every single year around christmas you know right before uh i guess christmas eve because isn't that how the christmas carol went is like you know christmas eve they changed someone from you know uh, a, a grinch or a scrooge and made them to be like you know really nice and thoughtful and and, and giving right Right on Christmas Day, right? They had yes. one night to do it. So they take that and all these spirits, these dead people, uh, go and do that every single year. They go and do a case study. They pick out an individual every single year, someone that's super naughty and they think is, is uh, that just cannot change. And they try to change them in one night, just recreating the Christmas Carol, like the three ghosts once a year and that's all they do that's their that's their job and so it starts off it, it has a um rose oh dang it why why am i blanking all these people's names uh rose the girl from pretty reckless nope <laughs> uh i don't anywho she rose anyhow Byrne. yes rose Byrne. thank you uh 
she's the one and it kind of starts off at the, right at the end with the ghost of uh future or yeah the ghost of futures whatever man i'm like so out of it right now um uh, and and you know she changes right at the very end uh there so uh oh yet to come ghost of yet to come sorry um who's played by tracy morgan which i didn't know that and that was that was fun to hear his voice there and uh <laughs> and so this is the 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 following where like they're like all right we got a new case they're gonna go do it um uh, another little thing is that these ghosts they can like after doing they call it seasons it's each time they do a uh you know change someone each year after so much they can do like retirement where means they get a second chance at going to earth and like living their life but they just they don't go actually i don't really know how that worked but they just go back to to life they become living again and they get to have they get to live out their lives at that point um and so that's what will Fer will ferrell's character is kind of like debating like should he retire and so this is kind of like his like last kind of go at it and he wants someone huge and that's where ryan reynolds comes in where he plays the douchey um you know like c ceo of like his own company where um he basically creates these like feuds and like just lies and and just deceives a whole bunch of people without like any uh you know whoever his client is he doesn't care who he hurts to get them to get like you know make them huge you know okay. so that's his job big just steps over everyone he does not care at all like i said and and so will ferrell is like this is the guy this is like he has such a global impact this is the one i want to change and they do they deem him unredeemable and he's like no he's not unredeemable and that's what you want to he wants to see and so they give it a shot and and it's just them going through and doing musical numbers and mostly it, it's will ferrell you know trying to change him but also ryan reynolds trying to change will ferrell's character um and that's pretty much the whole dynamic throughout the the movie i i think everyone kind of knows how this is gonna end and how it's gonna play out i wouldn't say there was anything that was like oh shit didn't see that coming um but that's not why you're watching it you're watching it for will ferrell and ryan reynolds and they're just their dynamic and i i thought it was it was very enjoyable watching them on screen together interacting with one another and they're not the greatest singers and and uh dancers especially ryan reynolds i was i was gonna kinda, say isn't will, will ferrell a really good singer i i thought he was fine um i don't think he's the greatest but i think he can hold a, hold a tune i i didn't ryan reynolds was kind of down but I, I don't that was my only complaint with this and i don't even know if you call it a complaint uh but it, it doesn't matter because you look past all that, you know, like it, the, the music's just, it's fun. It's supposed to be uh, funny lyrics, you know, so that, that's what you're really, you're watching and, and just seeing what's going on around them. Cause that's the entertaining part. Like I can see this film, uh, you know, turning into like a bigger musical, like on like Broadway or something, you know, like really? I can see like, a real one. Like I, I thought it has all the pieces to be really in the premise is fantastic i think and i think it has all those pieces i think they need to like add a few more songs and and just you know with tighter performances for whoever's doing those <laughs> leads you know like i think it'd be a, a fantastic musical and really fun to watch um and really funny too and so it's, it's really close to that this one i, I thought it was you know it has those musical numbers but then there's like there's like a a good chunk where i just thought like they just kind of like they almost like went away from it or like they didn't have like songs for it where i felt like it's going a little bit too long to be a musical without a musical number so that's where i'm saying like i think you get maybe a new writer and you know spice up some of these songs and everything and and add some more and, and you got a, a a hit i i think a big hit um 
but other than that, like, I mean, I feel like this is a, it was a good, good one. I think uh, Apple TV plus uh, got a, uh, got a good Christmas holiday hit on their hands. Um, and I think it probably would have done pretty well if it, if it went out of the theaters and I, maybe it might've had a small opening too. Has Apple released a movie in theaters or just on Apple television? Uh, well, that's what I was saying. I, th- I see show times for this. It's, so I Ooh. guess it is in, uh, it is in theaters. I don't know how well it's doing because you can just watch it at home, but, uh, uh um, you know, I, I just, it was a perfect one just to sit at home and the wife and I really in, enjoyed it. And it was a, a, you know, a good time at, at home on the couch. <laughs> Crazy so. Apple, like I thought it was a big joke that they were creating their own like network or their own like movie production, whatever. And they're actually doing really well with it. Yeah. I mean, this is the same thing like dude like i just think ryan reynolds like his production company and like the people that he gets behind him like they're making some good stuff man just like the adam project for netflix dude like like these streaming services are showing that they can actually have good content and doesn't necessarily have to go out to the movie theaters right like you don't it's not like the shitty stuff that we're we've been accustomed to so far they're actually making like like oh that could have been out in theaters and probably made some money but no they just release it on streaming and slash slide you know slide and put it out in theaters so i I, you know i think it kind of hurts them but i think it also makes them get some some new subscribers so uh this is one where i think uh it's worth getting a you know at least doing the free trial to watch it you know this is a good one i think to watch with uh you know the family and they they can bank on people just forgetting to uh, cancel their free subscription, dude. That's how <laughs> it always goes. I don't know how many subscription services for at least to get a few months from me because I forget. So, yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, Spirited. I, I, it's a it's a fun uh, time uh, holiday movie. You should uh, totally check it out. It's a fun time holiday. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> movie. Movie. <laughs> well. So. Did you watch a fun time holiday movie, right, Ryan? I I did, and I watched it twice. Ooh! I watched this fun time holiday movie. It was about life and death, and cultural war, and um, precious metals, and sea Mexicans, and <laughs> your favorite. No, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, I watched Wakanda Forever. It's a little indie film. Um. Not directed by Tarantino or James Cameron. With no movie stars, I think right? With zero movie stars whatsoever. No, yeah. yeah. No movie stars. And no. yeah, actually. Wait. <laughs> Case in point. This movie straight up had Angela Bassett and Lupita Nagoyo. Is that how you say her last name? Nagio? I think it's close. Something like that. I think the close first name. way you said it. And Okay, Angela Bassett's a like I don't know how she doesn't have an Oscar, but anyway, um, Wakanda Forever. This is the movie to wrap up Phase Four in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is uh, Phase Four is the beginning of the multiverse universe. What are they, whatever they're doing <clears throat> ties up a little bit of loose ends. We're getting ready for Phase Five. Um, perfect way to do it, dude. I think. Uh, Ryan Coogler is, he just, he knows this, he knows this brand. He knows this universe of Wakanda. He knows how to make it, make this seem like a real city. He knows how to, um, he did a phenomenal job taking the Black Panther character out of a Black Panther movie and bringing Black Panther right back into it because the, the city of Wakanda was in crisis because of, uh, Namor and the Talokayans. Tal- 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 I don't know how to say it, but Namor and Namor's race of people, which Peter, what you find out is they're mutants. So oh. we're starting to get mutants int- introduced into the MCU. And it was just an over. I do. They straight up referred to them as mutants. 
Namor straight up said, I'm a mutant. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, um, which is funny. That's not really talked about so much in this type of movie. But the reason I think it's not is because people are viewing this movie as a really, like, you need to go see this to see Angela Bassett's performance as a queen. You need to see Shuri's performance as the new Black Panther and the princess. And Riri Williams, dude, she's uh, she's pretty good being um, Ironheart. You're getting the new characters. You're getting the new wave of Marvel. And Peter, I'll, t- I'll tell you this: like the 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 elephant in the room was how were they going to handle Chadwick Bo- Boseman's death? Mm-hmm. They handled it perfect. They could. They, uh, you watch this movie, you get your answers within the first 15 minutes, and and you see how Wakanda uh, needs to thrive without the Black Panther. And then they play a very good homage to him at the end of the movie as well. Um, Book ends it. Basically, hey, we understand this truly happened. This is how it happened in our universe. And this is how we have our closure. So Hmm, that's cool. Overall, like it's still fresh enough. I don't want to give it away. It's one of those where you see it once and you're like damn that was good and then you see it again you're like okay here's all the easter eggs and here's all the other fun stuff so yeah would you so i I, if i remember correctly i i feel like we weren't the biggest fans of black panther not to say it's not a good movie i just thought it was overrated we were not the biggest fans of black panther and i yes we weren't because this one it sounds like you are i am because I think if I remember what I said about Black Panther is it tried to push this agenda, right? Mm -hmm. This one doesn't push an agenda. It addresses that Wakanda is preserving its resources and they found a breach in that. So the movie is, is conflict between how do I say this? Talokian, which is, (laughs) which is basically, I've been calling them sea Mexicans. That's um, perfect. Let's get sure. rebranded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's funny because, like I said, James Cameron better watch this movie because they did they did blue uh, sea creatures a lot better than Avatar did. Oh man! Oh, so, you know, just so you know, <laughs> that's um, why James Cameron's so upset with Marvel. <laughs> he's pissed because he's like, my creatures were blue, and uh, they're going after precious metals in both universes. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lupita N- Nagoya, she was okay. She was, um, do you remember her in, um, Black Panther? Yeah, okay. she was, um, King Katala's girlfriend, wife, right? Uh, was she? Mm-hmm. I just thought she was the is that something that came out in the second one? <laughs> I don't remember that. <clears throat> I see where this could be leading. Yes. Um, but she's fantastic, is what I'll say. And I thought, and all I know really for her is really that she's just kind of like the the head um what you guard person, you know, right? She's a fantastic fighter. War dog. War dog, yeah. Is what they were called. Yeah. So um, that's pretty we- much all I know. Remember when we watched the trailer, I was like, oh, here comes a Ryan Coogler like car chasing that doesn't make sense in a movie. Well, you know what? It fucking made sense. Did it good? Kudos yeah. to him because he made that car chase scene make sense in this movie. Um, I, I mean, they had the car chase scene in the, the first one too, right? Which, I don't know. Do you really always need a car chase scene? Not in the first Black Panther. It made no sense in there. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't quite necessary. I mean, it's it's just a chase scene, basically, and I guess you can always have that, but I don't know. The fact that you said there's another one in this movie is kind of sad, but it makes sense, but okay. Well, you saw All right. Trailer. Remember in the trailer? Yeah, I, I, yeah, just, you know, sometimes things get cut. <laughs> what's what's cool is the conflict between uh, uh, the Wakandans and the Telokins. Telokin is how you pronounce it. Um this is one of those movies where the enemy is presented, but you don't 
get a full sense of like who the enemy is. Does it make sense? Like the Talokans don't seem like they're a major, major threat, but you can you can see how powerful Namor is. Like Pat, Namor is a they're saying he's about as powerful as Thor. Oh wow. Universe. Yeah. So Okay. I yeah, I, I I always feel like he was kind of powerful. And I also what I heard about this one is not really that he's not really a villain per se. Right. So I, I kind of like that aspect of it too. So I, I, I feel like this is going to be released on Disney plus at some point. Like I feel like the way that it was just released in November, beginning of November sets it up right around that 45 day mark, really close to just after Christmas, you know, right before the new year for it to be released on Disney plus. So that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> I would say, Peter, this is a th yeah. You can wait for this one on Disney Plus. Yeah. the The other thing I was curious about was, I mean, you said um, Ironheart, like that she was really good, but like the, her bringing her into the story, did it seem forced or was it? Did it play well into the into it? It played extremely well into it. Okay. So the way that they introduced her, um, it's a major plot point of the movie. Okay. Well, then that's the... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that'll be interesting because I, I just felt like that was such a a weird thing where like I thought it was almost a little bit too soon, you know, like from after like, you know, Iron Man and all that and Tony Stark going away, like uh i she, felt it was a little bit too soon and like they were just shoehorning it in and i was like uh, it might be too much like kind of like with, uh, with her to tony stark in this okay whatsoever she's just very intelligent which she is in the comics but the way that they play it off in this movie it makes a lot of sense how when they did it how early they did it um and i mean they like any marvel movie they're gonna leave a door open for for her to just kind of navigate through the, the multiverse or the universe. Yeah. She's not going to stand alone movie. I, oh, she's getting a TV show. Yeah. She's getting a series. So, yeah. um, yeah. Okay. Well, that, that was my, my concern with, with seeing that trailer was like that aspect of it. It was like, is this really necessary? Is it, you're just throwing a little bit too much at it, but it's good to hear that you said it's, it was added nicely and it's a big part of the story. Um, so, cool. Well, I mean, I'm going to go see this. Like I said, I'm going to see all these Marvel movies and I'm going to go see the, 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 the stars in them. Uh, <laughs> and I can't wait. So, uh, come on. I'm going to bring in the new year probably watching Black Panther 2. Do it, Peter. Nice. So you, you know what time it is? Yes! Yes! Oh! 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 Oh, God! Oh! I'll have what she's having. Can I change mine? I don't. Yes. Did you write something <laughs> down? <laughs> or can I add one? Right. You know we're really loosey goosey on this. So, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go first since you're typing that up, but uh. I I watched Smile. Um, Did you smile throughout the movie? Out of enjoyment, yeah, I did. <laughs> this I is wasn't a, grumpy. Yeah, I wasn't. Like, this is a new horror movie. Um, one that, like, I remember watching the trailer. And I was like, eh, it kind of seems interesting, but it just seemed a little bit cheesy. And I think I thought it was PG thirteen. Then you come to find out, it's rated R. Okay. But it's it's out on Paramount Plus now, and it's actually really good. Like, you know, kind of lower budget, which I like. Kind of felt a little bit like an indie film with with you know slightly better production value. Um, a trains in this movie. <laughs> which, a train, yeah, A trains in it. Which I had to think about. I was like, who is this guy? Like, I recognize him, and then I looked it up. I was like, oh, it's fucking A train. Um, but it's it follows this uh, therapist and you know kind of a kind of a classic ghost story esque 
theme to it, you know, where you're you're kind of being haunted and you got to figure out why. Um, you know, you kind of get that backstory. And so it follows all those tones, but I thought like some of the scares, I mean, I didn't think anything was over the top, but I thought they were, they were well done. Some of them were uh, some pretty creepy and I thought it had a, a, a good finale. Like, so overall uh, really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. So uh, watch the horror movie smile on Paramount plus uh, it might even still be in theaters. So, um, but it was, it was a good time. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I watched, and this is based off your recommendation. I watched uh, Werewolf Within. Mm, Werewolves one. Within. Yes. And dude, that was a good little flick. Um, it was a whodunit, and uh, Milana Ventrub, Lily. She's very good at playing the Lily character and everything she does, but she did a really good job. Yes. Um, and each character, this is this is one of those whodunits where I was guessing throughout the entire movie, man. Like it wasn't obvious to me, at least. Did you get it right away? Uh, I went back and forth all over the place, and so no, by the end, I did not guess it because they led you in so many different directions. It was great. The one that got me is the seven. That's where I was like, okay, that has to be it. Do you remember? Mm, I'm trying to remember that reference. The seven. No, you're not to remind me. All right. I'll remind you off air. Okay. Uh, speaking of werewolves, I started watching Wednesday, the Adams family series. Yes. And I have not watched that yet. Um, it's great. Uh, perfect Tim Burton. Um, I'm three episodes in and I've enjoyed every one of those episodes. I love the casting dude. Like Louise uh, Guzman as Gomez. Mm -hmm. per perfect dude. Really? Yeah. He's Gomez Adams. I mean, he's, he's not like this suave, sexy dude. Like he's Louise Guzman. And it's funny is he's just like this kind of like fat sloppy dude just hanging out with Catherine yeah. Zeta Jones just being It's like it's it's more true to the, the cartoon, right? Yep. I haven't mm. got to the, the point where they've shown Uncle Fester, which I'm excited because it's Fred Amerstein. Oh nice. And I think he would I like be him. when I saw that, I was like, Oh, he's a he would be an awesome Uncle Fester. Yeah. So. I I really I want to watch it, but I, just, I felt it was a like released at a weird time. Like that was something I think I was in the mood for, like in October. And so I I, I plan on watching. It. It's just hasn't been the top of my list because it's it's holiday season. <laughs> it is holiday season. It's not spooky season. No, that's why I watch Smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I watch Wakanda Forever. Yep. <laughs> So nice. I I'm happy to hear that. That's a good series because I am looking forward to watching it. What's cool is it's it's a different story on just the Adams family. Like the, the the focus being on Wednesday is really cool. Yeah, I like that. I I think it's more concise. And Wednesday was such a great character, which uh, I would think you want to see more. I mean, like that was something they. they like they focus in on her on in the other movies, you know, in the, the, the films, because like she is a really captivating character. So, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm excited. I, mean, I also heard Christina Ricci's in this too. Really? Yeah. So interesting. So cool. Well, uh, I'm going to check those out. Well, I already checked that one, but I'm going to watch uh, Wednesday at some point. And I highly recommend you watch and smile and uh, yes, smile until then. Um, but Ryan, it's been a blast. Glad you had a great Thanksgiving. Um, excited for the future. I think we're going to have some fun announcements coming up. And uh, until then, it's time to blast off. Let's blast off. <laughs> We didn't do this all episode. I know. Save it for the finale. We gotta make that a t-shirt. <laughs>